We are starting. Oh, we are live. Hey guys, welcome to the Tank RC. We are live. Uh, starting a little bit late tonight. Uh, went to a baseball game with my little guy. It was the last game of the season for the playoff, kind of. So uh, preseason is done. So the season. Oh, summer league is gonna start. Randy, you still have the other video playing? Yeah, give me a second. One. There, hello, Kel. Okay, I don't. I don't have to yell at you anymore. No, no, if you want to. <laughs> hey, and we have Jack with us, and we have Steve O.D. with us in the house. Good night. Hello, hey, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. I'll set up my two monitors. And uh, you should maybe change my name to the jumping kangaroo after my last video. There's about, I don't know, three or four comments. <laughs> Is that the first one? You were the first one, that's correct. <laughs> oh, that, that truck didn't jump too much. That military truck, it, it yeah, had really good. Yeah, I was, I was, I was com completely surprised, to be honest. I mean, I mean you've got to remember the... Some of the rocks that I, I jumped were pretty big. They're not like small rocks. Yeah, they are big. Hey, Bill. Alvin, how are you, mate? Bill that? Boynton. <clears throat> Bill Boynton, thanks for stopping by. And uh, I did uh, that Jeep you got. That's a beast, that thing, mate. I, just, uh, I was watching Bill Boynton's video. Yeah. BSRC, uh, Justin, how are you, mate? What's going on, guys? Uh, <coughs> hey, Tony, how are you, mate? Actually, uh, Tony was uh, nearly, nearly the first comment on my video. I was, I was doing backflips. Oh wow! Tom and actually, uh, Tony actually commented on one of your video. It was a second comment. I was oh, surprised how quick it was I, on there. I gave you a thumbs up, and I did it on purpose, not commenting. Why is that? I, I just felt like it. I felt like not commenting and, and to see what yeah. you would say. Uh, you didn't watch the video or whatever, but I did give you a thumbs up. I don't, I, uh, I don't have a go at anyone if they, uh, if they, <laughs> whether they comment or not. Why would I do that? I don't know. I just, know, I just felt like, like you know, tonight. No, no. I'm not in the mood to be teased tonight. Okay. Me, trust me. <laughs> All right, Jack. Been getting extremely exhausted lately, out of nowhere, which has been worrying. Uh, yeah, I'm not feeling the best either, mate. I, I had to cut the video short yesterday when I was out filming. Oh yeah. I nearly, I nearly kind of uh, fainted yesterday. That's not good. Ah, uh, the diabetes is going crazy, mate. Oh yeah. Yeah. But I was happy when Tony was there. I couldn't believe it. I was. Uh, I was looking for a party hat and uh, one of those blower things, you know, for the party, and uh, it was there that quick. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. Well, there you go. They, they, it's party time for you. Yeah, it was good. Nice to see him there. Nice and early. Yeah. Ah, the truck handle all right. No, if I was uh, nothing broke, you know, because I did, I did go over some big rocks, and uh, the drive stayed in place, and. Uh, it's got a little bit of a zip to it, you know. It's not too bad. And uh, for seventy dollars, uh, I, I recommend it. I mean, if you want to mod it, you can mod it. But sorry, Tony. So, Andy, we're doing lipo. Sorry. Oh, I guess they do come with lipo batteries, don't they? I was saying you put lipo no, batteries too. Yeah, they're lithium ion, mate. Oh, are they? Port of yeah. But yeah, it's a bit the same sort of thing, really, you know. So, but it did quite good. I was surprised. Yeah. Sorry, I took up a little bit of time there. But a lot of people like the video. I suppose they like the editing and stuff. Evening, everyone. How you going, uh, Kagan? Micron RC. Who else is there? Master, master. It's not a bad cool name, that Mast Master. Arlo is in the house. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's been a couple new things that came out today. 
What's that? What things? Well, uh, the that Traxxas TRX4 with um, with Trax is actually out at the hobby stores, but won't be available till mid July. So again, they're teasing a so bunch all of the people. people so all the people that bought the track separate and whatever they cost, and now they're bringing out the whole kit. Yeah, they're bringing out the kit as a bundle. In other words, you don't get wheels with it. Ordered my first four S for the outcast, but realized that I only have charges that can do two and three S. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> <Alvin. coughs> Some guys, how's it one doing? How are you, Charlie? How are you doing? You want me to keep an eye on the chat tank? Yeah, you... the link on the chat, I guess. Okay. JP Slayer, how are you doing, buddy? Click on the link here. If that doesn't work, send me an email at thetankrc at gmail.com. Justin says he didn't send him an invite. He's upset. Who, hey, who didn't get an invite? Justin, BSRC. He was actually going to do a hangout last night. But uh, it seems like he didn't. There he is. Uh, what are you cleaning, Steve? Eh? Another body, mate. I'm putting the sticker the mask on. Sticker mask. Oh, yeah. Did you yeah. paint the mask on yet? No, I'm putting the mask on right now. I might paint it. Oh, too. you're putting the masking. Yeah. Here's Justin right now. All right, Justin. What's up, guys? How's it going? All right, mate. We're going, man. All right, all right. Did, so, uh, uh, and also the. Um, Element RC uh, Enduro has started shipping this week, so uh, which is a good thing. Yes. So a lot of people are going to be getting that car. We're going to see start seeing more and more pictures of those. And uh, Vanquish uh, VS410 uh, Pro uh, kit has came out. Yeah, we talked about that one last last week. I think it came out on. Uh... Scale news. Yeah, we we're trying to figure out what's the difference between the pro and the, the original. Well, to tell you the truth, I am not sure, but uh, hopefully, uh, Josh uh, will be coming on here tonight and talk to us about it. Okay. Josh from who? So, Josh uh, Feed. He tied his last name. Cool. Josh from Vanquish. Yeah. So uh, I did Harley RC? Him. Hey? Harley Designs? Yeah, Harley. Yeah. Uh, I did send him a message. He said, yes, he's filming right now. Uh, cool. But he's going to finish. Uh, he's saying, he messaged me and says, I'm going to finish this step of filming and we'll jump in. Huh. So we Very can cool. ask him in person what's the big difference uh, between the two. Bill but, said that the chat's out of sync. Whoa. What's Your going on? Got a haircut. Uh, That's what's after this, all that talk. One of two this year. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I'll back back up your head a little bit. We want to see the top of that head. Did someone make Kagan oh. paranoid last week? I, I guess. We Did talked about his hair and he... Uh, I thought it looked good. Both do. I'm going to cut off for a second, guys. I'm going to try resetting my internet system here. Everything's choppy yeah. on my end. Yeah, yeah. Bill say yeah. the chat's, uh, chat's in a delay. Oh, really? But someone's got their, their um, thing on. Their, um, their sound from YouTube's on. I can hear myself. I don't know, uh, Earl. Look, look, look at the, what's available at the hobby store, and uh, I don't have a just for that. a trip called to charger that I can do up to success. The problem with what I think is you cannot get cheap and quality in the same sentence. Nope. So nope. It, it's it's hard to say that. Right there. <laughs> 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 Yeah. 
It's, uh, well, uh, hey, Yannick, how are you doing? We got Yannick in the house. He lives close to me. Hi, hey, Yannick. Twenty years younger, he says uh, to you, Kagan, JP Slayer. Appreciate that. Oh yeah, at least twenty years younger. So the biggest difference between the TRX four, it comes equipped with the tracks. So yeah. that's that's the main difference, and it is the TRX four Sport, which means it does not have the. Uh, uh, the transmission, the locking diffs, and uh, and anything like that. What's the price difference between the two now? Well, this one, I believe it was uh, five ninety nine. Yeah, five ninety nine. I think it was pre order. Yeah, five ninety nine US. Five ninety nine for the tracks one, and what's the yeah. uh, the other one go for? What's the, the normal? Hey, three sixty nine, I believe. So so that's, can't be that much of a difference. Two hundred dollar difference. Jeez. Are the tracks two hundred bucks? Yeah. That's insane. <clears throat> yeah. Tactical, plastic, aren't they? Tactical is only a little bit more than the sport. Oh yeah. I think well, track what's, is, neat, uh, what's neat with this kit? Also, yeah. it, it does have traction, but it does have the LED light kit, which is nice. The top LED light kit. And it seems to have the lights inside. And it comes with a bunch of scale accessories. So Yannick is saying $269.99 at the shop. That's insane for those tracks. Uh, and that's probably uh, Yannick. Is that Canadian? Because Yannick works at the hobby store here in Orleans. So That's insane. $270 for tracks. For the tracks, okay. inside for the tracks. Oh, okay, okay, two sixty nine for the tracks. That's crazy. So, yeah, you don't get the the servos and the diff locking diffs with the with this one. It's just the tracks. Uh, I see mast, masters in Wales. Jeez, it must be early over there, mate. What's well, a two, three in the morning there over there at the moment, eh? Yeah, something like that. Jeez. Fully painted body, an orange or in blue. He reckons it's worth it. Mine has servos in it. Oh, yeah? Well, that's what Yannick's saying. Be worth it to get a cheap TRX4 Sport if you wanted to try and sell the tracks. Yeah, it would be. Two hundred and seventy dollars. That's a lot of money. Hey, John, I didn't see you pop in, mate. Hey, hey, yep, stuck in you? on you. How are you, mate? Good, you? Not too bad. Yeah, too, Man, too that silly. really puts up the center of gravity way up high. These things. So two seventy. That's uh, that's is that US dollars? Yeah. No, it's Canadian. Oh, Canadian. Okay, so that's about the same as our price here. Yeah, th those tracks are very expensive. Jeez. It's unreal. They're, they're only plastic, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're mm -hmm. just rubber and plastic. Rubber yeah, and plastic. plastic. And plastic bushings. No no uh, bearings in there. Nothing. One Jeez. big bearing in the center, but all the, all the side ones are bushings. Yeah. That's unbelievable. That's, hey, that's but you do get a hack. You do get an axe and a shovel. That's, that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, and a snorkel. That's a bonus prize. <clears throat> You're going to need oh, a late lens up too. Yeah, that's just. Hey, Harvey, yeah, how are you, mate? He's somewhere there in the corner. Hmm. Okay, nobody can come nice in now. Kit. Nobody can come in. We need, we need to get the room for Josh to come in. Oh, I won't be staying on very long, mate. Someone wants to take my spot on the mark. Grant, how are you, Grant? Grant's RC. Uh, so there's a transmission. Bill Craig, there you go. G6 was a blast. Oh, yes, it was. It was fun, the G6. I had a lot of people there. But I was so busy running after my son and, and making sure yeah. he was okay. And especially yeah. on that big, long bridge. Like, he was so nervous to go through through the bridge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah that's 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 mostly the walking part. He got to go down and then back up to the side. <clears throat> yeah. So I was worried about him. So I, I actually rushed. Like I went through fast on that bridge. I did not even take any videos of the bridge or any pictures of the bridge with my truck on it. Uh, nothing. Like I was. I just wanted to take care of my son and make sure he he came in okay on the other side. Yeah. So that's the way it goes, Tank. Yeah. yeah. Geez, Randy, you, you, you're spotless there now after all that cleaning, mate. Oh, yeah, I'd clean everything off. <laughs> I worked on every single one of my trucks today, and it's just dirt on top of dirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you? What's up, guys? How you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Okay. Bill Boyton, I think U.S. is around 250. So, so Tank, it says coming mid-July, but I saw our local hobby shop has one. Is that just a demo? Or yeah, it's a demo. demo. It's a demo. Uh, okay. yeah, has Yannick, one too. Yannick is online right now with us, and uh, maybe he can clarify that because he actually works at the hobby store, and he did receive some. But he's saying, he's saying that one is his. I guess he's going to buy it. Yeah, the demo is yeah. Yeah, buy the demo. I was gonna say the one that's up on my screen is the one that's down at my local hobby store. Oh yeah? Yep. Yeah, I already had it too. I was just in there last week and I had it in. See, this one does not say that it comes with the, the dual speed transmission or the servos uh, for locking diffs. It does have the servo in the front for steering. But I don't think it. the sport one doesn't. Yeah, yeah none of the sports come with that. Yeah. yeah, Yannix was saying his came with servos. What? That one, that one, uh, we ha we have it in in a local hobby shop. Yeah, it's just a regular uh, uh, sport. Yeah, it's a sport. Just with it's the tracks. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, uh, RC mass master, how fast can they go? Well, I know Ben from uh, buy a breaker fixer, didn't he put a, a success in his? Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, he went pretty fast with it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not but, sure what stock they, they, they're they not go. meant to go fast. They're no, not yeah. meant to go fast. No, no. You, hey, you can go though. fast. But it was a good experiment. Yeah, that's what he yeah. said. He was just having fun. Yeah, no, he did, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. It's a sports version. But it does look sexy. It does look like very nice. Yeah. Sport doesn't have multiple servos. Doesn't have multiple servos. It looks really high. Does it come with that high arm lift kit yes, on it already? Uh, I looked at the specs real quick. I didn't see if it came with the lift kit. I it don't does think look so. Just the tracks make it that much taller. Yeah. yeah. I see. Really, there you go, mate. Because the lift, I don't think it. There's drivetrain. I was gonna say I had a good look at mine down at the hobby store, and I have the lift kit on my TRX4, and it didn't look like it had the lift kit on it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it does either. I can't imagine what the center nope. of gravity would be like with the lift kit and the tracks. Well, when the yeah. tracks first came out, they said that they recommended it with the lift kit, and I thought that's that's really really high up. Like that's mm -hmm. you make it really easy to tip over. I would think. But I I did, I did a search on lift for on the web page, and it didn't find it, so I doubt that it does have it. But with those tracks, it just it, it gives you a lot of clearance. That's for sure. When you look at the front of those trucks, it's just crazy. It also comes with a light kit. Yeah. Yes, the light kit comes with it. I'm surprised the tactical is only twenty is twenty dollars more than the sport. Yeah, that's hot. Yeah, it seems like discontinued now. So if you're looking for a cheap way to get the 
all the featured long wheelbase TRX4. That's the one to get. The tactical, mm -hmm. yeah. Which one is the tactical? Is yeah, because it comes with all the servos and the diff lops, locks and everything, and it's it's, it's been it's the one that looks like, almost right. like a Hummer. Yeah, well, yeah, it's funky looking, but it um, but you can get it cheap. Is that what you're saying? Just change out the body. Yeah, yeah. The bodies are expensive, but yeah. Well, I know uh, even RC uh, Sparks had that one. I saw at one point. I think it's kind of interesting. You know, it's definitely a look, um, yeah. but I think it's cool for what it is. It just looks weird on the trail. Is is all a little bit just the stylings? Looks like it should be in a war or something. You know, right? Yeah. <laughs> or tactical on the street. Kind of SWAT team or something. Yeah, that was all. I like it though. I like. Yeah, here's a tactical. TRX4 tactical. Then you got the builder's kit. I believe the builder's kit comes with uh, all the servos, I think. Eh? No. No? Well, you don't get. No, no, nothing that's sport has diff lock. So you only get just the steering. That's it. Yeah, it does have a sport body. And stuff. Yeah, sport kit. Okay. Uh, it says color single trans transmission and fully locked diffs all the time. Yeah, it's a crawler kit that has the full it's everything. Single single transmission. Ah. So Canadian at four thirty two, the cheapest is the sport kit. I could just a bit say up your nose there, Scott. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear me? Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. Just a bit picky nose, mate. <laughs> it was funny. But the blazer, the blazer looks nice. That body is just sexy. Yeah, I'll jump out and watch, guys. That way, if Harley's trying to get in, he can get in. Okay, he didn't message me yet. You can stay for a bit. Okay. Uh, who's your Who's your guest? You're You're waiting on. Uh, Harley Design. Oh, nice. What's that T-shirt you got on, Kagan? What's it say? Uh, Alpha Beta. Something Beta, yeah. Whatever the That's Lambda cool Beta. Is. Yeah, whatever the middle yeah. one is. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, <clears throat> T-shirt from a movie. The neighbors. Alpha Pi Beta? The Pi? No, it's not Pi. Pi is like triangle. I think, uh, I, I, think to... I think Scott Zilla was trying to do an impersonation of someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that was what he was doing. <laughs> hey, I'm sure he was. <laughs> <laughs> me? No, I'm, me. Sure you, I'm sure you were doing an impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> Poor bloke. No one's seen him around, eh? He's disappeared. No. I brought yeah. something for you, Jack. What's that? I told you the next time you had a stream, I was going to bring something to show you. Yeah, go on. Far away. Uh, it's a Charvel guitar. Oh, no, die, please. No, just leave it where it is, mate. I drug this huge-ass case out from the other no. side of the house. <laughs> no, You're going to see the damn guitar. Leave it where it is, mate. I, I, I don't want to see it. <laughs> Maybe later on. We'll see what happens. We can do it afterwards. We can do it afterwards. Mate, just leave it where it is. Okay. Those things were a beast. I know they're old and all that. and. Oh. Uh, Hardly find them and uh, nah, just leave it where it is, brother. <laughs> What's that truck, Randy? That one there is my TF2. Oh, that's a beast. Oh, yeah, that's the tow truck. All these springs, dualies. Oh, yeah. I actually just got this one back together. I know, it was broken for a while, eh? Well, it wasn't broken, it was missing parts. Well, therefore, it was broken. Oh, the parts were in six by six. Well, therefore, it was broken. I don't say it wasn't broken when it was in My God, how many of those do you have? 
<laughs> I get one that TF2 and I got a spare one. Uh, 75 game dog. Wait till uh, uh, Josh from uh, Hardy Design is going to come in. I don't want anybody else to come in for now. Uh, once he exit, maybe we can have because there's nine now. Um, and I got to make sure that we have room. I can jump out when he wants to come in. Yeah. Hey, yeah how did you do those jewelries, Randy? How did you put them together? Yeah, same here. Uh, they're actually a dually rim from RC four wheel drive with a bead lock inside. It's two oh. rims that pull together properly. <clears throat> those one point nines or uh they're one seven semi truck wheels. Yeah. One seven. They're called the diesels that are actually discontinued now. <laughs> but um you familiar with the RC four wheel drive wagon wheel? I am. It's like, it's like putting two of those together at the same time. Okay. It's a real pain, yeah. <laughs> Come on, wagon wheels are not that, are that hard to put in. Yeah. Try doing the outside part of the rim, the inside part, the ring. Do it doubled up with another set of rims with screws that go all the way through everything. Oh, yeah. It would have been nice if they would have made it to each room. You could do uh, one or two, like do two screws separate, just to clamp it down and have the whole thing go together. But oh well. Hmm. Those pit bulls have been on there for two years. I have no plans of taking them off. Oh yeah. Let's see. I, I got something up here. Hold on. Yeah, it's a it's a beast of a truck. That <clears throat> I think I remember. Yeah, like clean, you... everybody's hiding on top. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, that must end, yeah. Willie's one and Willie's two. Yeah, you got the two Willie's there. Oh, there's another Willie's hanging on the wall up there. Yeah. Another one hanging yeah, up I, there. I, I, yeah, I think I remember when you were putting that uh, tow truck together, the back part. Yeah. Jeez, that was a while ago now. See, uh, a while back I did a trade for uh, some stuff. Hey, Randy's still presenting. Hi. Uh, I did some trade for some stuff, and I do have the dually, the yep. 1.7 dualies. Is that the one you have? Yep, same ones. Okay, but you got a 1.9 on there, right? A, a, a tire, I mean. No, I have a 1.5 on there. Oh, you have a 1.5? Okay. I have a 1.5 pit bulls. So uh, a while back, I got the rear one, so I got two of them. I, I oh, might change it. Them. But my front one has the stupid bearing. Yes, uh, there is a adapter piece you need for those. Yeah, I know. It's the whole center, the whole black center you have to change. Do you need the part number to that? No, I, I, I saw it before. I know where to find it. Yeah. And to take it off, you got to remove all these screws. All these little screws have to come out, and then you change that centerpiece. But it's kind of cool. It, it's very neat how it is. Uh, right now on the TF2, I have my um, SSD 1.5s on the front. Okay. With the bead lock. So. But I do have another set. But these ones are glue on duelies. Yeah, those are the 1.9 glue on, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think these are 1.7 rim, sorry. All right. Yeah. Let's check it for the 1.7. I don't remember now. I found them for so long. Hmm. I think they're 1.7. Yeah, they're nice wheels. Yeah. Yeah, they are nice. I got to take them apart to actually see if there's foam inside because it's a kit that you got from them. But but I bought it, the, I, I traded them this way, so they came already pre assembled. So I got to take them apart to see if there's foam because I doubt it, but it's kind of weird the feeling of it. But man, these tires are small. Like putting this on the truck would make it look small. They look really scale, though. Oh, you're right. Oh, you got someone upset tank in the chat. Ooh. Oh. You're in trouble, brother. <laughs> oh. yeah, that's because he can't come on. That's why. <laughs> Poor guy. 
He's uh, you're in trouble, bro. <laughs> well, it, it all depends. If somebody wants to cut out and leave you in here, oh, there's Josh. How are you doing? How's it going? Hey, Josh. Doing good. Hey, you doing? Good, good. Just so some some people wanted to get in here, and I said, the, "There's already nine people. You got to wait till Josh gets in, and somebody leaves, and then you'll be able to get in." <laughs> nice. So, so are you filming, uh, getting ready for another uh, video coming out soon? I'm uh, doing the uh, how-to videos on assembling the VS410 Pro. So all the step-by-step -step videos going through, you know. Oh, very cool. Every screw size, every, you know, all of it. So it's on the work. I've already lost my voice for the night, so. That's all I've good. Got to the end uh, of that. When I look at your web page, there you have some pre-order now for the VS410 uh, yeah. Pro Black and Pro Clear. Right. What's the difference between all the models? Uh, basically, the, it's just the axle color. Uh, it, that's really the only difference is you know whether you want black anodized axles or clear anodized axles. Okay, and the, the, from the pro to the origin, what's the difference? The motor is lower, some people were saying? So, huge, yeah, big differences there. Um, so, on the, sorry, I'm just doing like some cleanup while we're talking here. I, I got scraps and things everywhere. But yeah, the VS410 Origin Limited, the very first one, uh, that one had uh, the same chassis rails. But then it had, you know, different cross braces, and it came with aluminum front rear bumpers, aluminum sliders, uh, and then it had a, a standard three gear style transmission. So the big difference is now is that we've gone to these molded center sections, you know, or molded cross braces front and rear. The rear includes a fuel cell. The front and rear cross braces are now a post style bumper setup so they accept a, a standard post style bumper 43 millimeter spacing which is what you'll see commonly for that style um, okay. and it includes molded bumpers now as well uh, rather than the aluminum ones so they're also they're a higher clearance bumper so you get a lot more approach and departure angle they're also just less stressed on everything you'll you know you'll find you can throw it around and you don't notice it like you do running in a metal truck bump or metal bumper truck like a lot of us know we put metal bumpers on all kinds of things and when you do that you notice a big difference between a, a uh, stock plastic bumper and things like that but it also allowed us to get the uh the launch price down on it you know to that 749 even though it's got a, a much better and much more involved transmission the uh the transmission it does have a, a much lower motor position and it's forward so i actually have it installed that's the point that i got to on this build today you can kind of see here um the, the motor actually sits just behind the servos but it sits all the way at the bottom so that's the motor down there uh, it's just it's all the way down this okay. actually, i've got a this is a, a finish so you can see this one's got a, an older rock 412 in it um but you can see it back there, you know, and it's, yeah. so when you're at like full bump, the bottom of the motor is basically at the bottom of the links. So way down there, way low, way forward. It's, and then the, the skid plate actually, you know, goes all the way up to help protect the motor. So it's a nice, oh, that's good. Nice solution. One piece. It does require an offset axle. You can see that that drive shaft runs right alongside that skid plate. Oh yeah, uh, and they're they're right on the same level, so you can't run it with a centered style axle. Now that skid plate is metal. No, no, it's it's a, a molded skid plate, just like the last VS410. Okay. So the transmission has overdrive out of the box, so helps you with you know, steering, climbing, descending, whatever, and then the whole thing's also built for. A optional dig that's basically available out as soon as we release so it'll be available basically the same time the dig housing it's a new dig compared to the old one it uses very similar mechanism inside yeah but it replaces the rear portion of the transfer case and then it has a dig housing that goes on 
we extended the rear of the transfer case on this version just so that if you do choose to add a dig down the road, you don't have to change drive shafts. The drive shafts that it comes with still work with a dig. Now, so, are those drive shaft metals or are they plastic? Yep. They're metal. They're uh, the incision machine drive shafts. So, same drive shafts we used on the last one. They're super strong. We never had an issue with them. They, they work really well. So, because the price point is a little high on those when you compare it to the other truck, but there's way more bullet bulletproof in right. this truck than the other trucks. Yeah, I mean, it still comes with, like, you know, this is a, a complete one. You know, it's got aluminum machine yeah. axles, knuckles, yeah. the chromoly axle shafts, stainless links. It's got the incision scale shocks, so yeah. all metal shocks. There's a lot to it. Uh, the gears inside the transmission are all machined all the way through. So, other than the spur gear, of course. Spur gear is a standard 56 tooth spur gear. Comes with a 15 tooth machine pinion. Cool. Bead locks, you know, all that, all that fun stuff too. And then the F9 style axles on this one compared to the uh, D44s that were on the last one. Single stage foams? Single stage foams, yes. So. Yes, I've got my my very orange toolbox here in the office. So, so pre-orders are now, and when is it going to start shipping? Um, so we're we're giving a ship date of late Jan or of late late July. Okay, um, you said January. There scared me. I'm already I'm already tired for the night. Um, <laughs> but you know, we're often we we gave a conservative ship date. So you know, I think that. Uh, I think that will will meet most people's expectations and hopes on that. Cool. So yeah, you know, it's uh, I we don't always want to give do pre-orders and things like that, but for one, we've been working on this truck for over a year. You know, it's. And, I know uh, there's a, there was a lot of uh, the uh, of, of the uh, origin uh, at the G6 at the Canadian G6 here. Oh, nice! The and everybody loves it. Everybody that has one and uh, uh, doesn't break down and it goes through a lot of. Uh, and, and, and it shouldn't. You know, it's an ex it, it's an expensive truck. We know that. It's yeah. but it's got five hundred dollars worth of axles in it. You know, so it's like if you were gonna if you were gonna build something like it. It's actually a really good value, but yeah. it's not for everybody. I get it. Some people are going to are one a two ninety nine red cat, and you can have fun too. Yeah, you know, people are gonna have you can have fun with. Yeah, I've had less fun. I've had more fun for less at times, and I've I've paid a lot more for a lot dumber stuff too. That's what I got my son a Gen eight red cat, and I said, "Here, have fun with that." And he had a blast at the at the G six, and he's only yeah. nine, so. You get the Gen 8, and then if I get the money, I'll buy the Origin for me. So. Right. Yeah. It's, you know, not everybody has to spend it. I get it. Yep. It's, uh, I, I honestly do enjoy driving this truck an insane amount. The new transmission is really nice. It's super planted. It's just, you know, it's got a Scout ish style body on it, which is obviously my, uh, my preference for bodies. So I I didn't I didn't design I mean I don't know if there's I can't remember if there's anything left on this truck at this point that I've actually designed, you know, like it, it's I don't I don't get much into the design side. Well I like the fact you got an interior. That's that I like. You have the yeah, it's got a nice deep interior. It's got a this body is also the half cab body now compared to the, the old one which was like the SUV style. Um but it actually it drops down quite a bit in the back too. Uh, That's nice. It's uh, you know, it's like thirty millimeters deep for you Canadians. Hmm. So. <laughs> 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 but it's uh, it's actually a pretty interesting body design. I'll show you the body I'm going to use in the videos, but yeah, nobody will be surprised. Uh, so this is this is how the body comes other than painted obviously but 
the bed is actually cut out. The bed is part of the interior. Oh, so, oh really? Yeah. Um, where did I do with the interior? I okay. don't know. So here's the interior pan. Okay. You know, and then it's got a separate dash like before. So the dash goes in there. Um, and it comes with steering wheel and shifters and door hand, blah, blah, blah. But this actually drops in and then bolts together. Cool. So, yeah, you know, you get it. It's, it's an easy separation, but it also allowed us to do this truck style without that big wing that you normally yeah. get with truck styles. You can see it's a, it's a, it's a hard line. Yeah. So Good. we all... I love truck style bodies, but I, I always hate that wing. Yeah. You know, so we used a, a really good quality Lexan to get that, that tight corner. It's not thin right there. It's just the body turned out really cool. So it's, hmm. uh, I like, I like a half cab. Cool. Yeah. Uh, RC Mark Master, uh, if you want to come in, I did put a link in the chat. You can come in and ask some question. There is room for one more in here right now. And if somebody here in the live video wanted to ask Josh a question, go right ahead. So, I'm going to grab a water while I'm... Good idea. Done. I think 75 Game Dog was looking for a link too, Francois. Yeah, 75 Game Dog, the link is there if you want to come on in. Now's your chance. Yeah, ever since you showed me the VS104 Pro the other day, Tank, I've been drooling over this thing. When can I hand oh, you my nice. money, Josh? Yeah. <laughs> you can order now. I'm like, you know. I'm like trying to, I think I'm going to sell my UDR. You're going to sell your it's UDR? Cool. Send it to me then. <laughs> <laughs> it, they're such a cool truck, but for like for me, like that's that one that I always like went back and forth on buying. Just, but. For me, I just don't drive that type of truck. Mm -hmm. like, I, but I, I want it because it, they did such a good job. It's so well engineered. I'll trade you. I mean, we don't have to argue about this at all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just you like in the end, I, I didn't pull the trigger on it because I, I just, I'm like, I don't think I'm going to drive it. <laughs> That's your down payment. Thanks, Tony. I did buy that, uh, the Arma infraction. Okay. Sweet. Because Tony, Tony said that in the chat. He said you that, uh, what did you say? I know yeah. what he's doing with his infraction. What's he done with his infraction? Oh. Yeah, have you done anything with your infraction? Any modification? Um, I didn't. I haven't done anything other than blow up the tires in like 30 seconds. <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds? Wow. I think, so I had a, there was an issue. Uh, I, I obviously had a couple that had a, a defect. Um, so they, uh, they're a belted tire and mm. they just, they came debonded and just threw, threw chunks off of them. Oh. And I, I mean, it, was a, it was a bummer for sure. I was wow. on 6S and I was driving it like an idiot, but that's like, the, that's how they should, like that, that's how that truck's going to be driven. So I, uh, well, Tony's was, got a bit out of his wheels, his tires, he's, he's done a few bashings and he's done quite well yeah you know i think i just had a couple that that got missed in uh in the the whole uh production thing and so it happens but the the worst part about it is that i'm stuck without being able to drive it basically until sometime in july yeah uh, until we come out with the parts for it right were you and at, I, I sorry josh you know, were you at the um uh, horizon fest yeah that's where i bought it yeah, well, Tony said he saw you there. Which, which Tony? CCXRC. He said he ah, saw you there. Yeah, I've seen his channel. I, I, don't, I don't think I've ever oh. met him. Oh. Yeah, it's a good bloke. So, and yeah, I was he's, just like, He's put his uh, infraction through a bit. Yeah, I, you know, I think that there were six of them there for sale. Um, yeah. And it just it got unlucky and got the lemon, I guess, right? So, yeah. I, uh, I'm looking forward to it, though. I just wish that it would have been running long enough that I could have done some video stuff on it before everybody got them. But instead, I'll have to wait. I sent Horizon an email or Arma, whatever. 
And they're just like, yeah, it'll be sometime in July. I'm like, uh, so they can't even get you some tires. Proline are nope. coming up with belted tires, uh, us in New Hampshire says. Uh, I did see that they were coming out with belted tires. I want. I've I've actually got GRPs uh, as well, which are mm -hmm. belted. You know, same bolt pattern mm -hmm. and all that. But yeah, you know, yeah, fine in, in, on the right. I right. think at least run it. I could, but the, the whole thing, you know, is like those tires do roll smoke when you're driving. And that's like that's the cool thing about it. I, mm -hmm. I want to do that. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just send you some Jura Trex tires. You didn't even get to, to roll smoke off them before they blew up on you. Well, yeah, I did been, it. I did it after. Sorry, as we've been talking about in the hangouts, when these um, the infraction came out with the smoky, uh, you know, we've been saying that for how long, you know, that we want, you know, people try to do uh, burnouts with their tyres to smoke them up, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, bang, you know, you see this uh, a car come out with these type belted tyres, and they just smoke up so easy. <laughs> Well, they, I think they smoke up easy because they are flat. They don't have a lot mm. of threads on it, and mm. the grooves are actually going inside instead of outside. So I think that's why they smoke up easy. I think they actually did uh, a lot of compound testing. I, I think yeah. that it's more than the design because, like yeah. a GRP, is a, a stiff belted, you know, almost the same style as far as that goes. It's got less sidewall, but um, you know, the tire itself isn't going. I think that Arma is likely did a, a significant amount of like of tire compound yeah. testing to get that style. Yeah, I wonder if it's real rubber instead of silicone. Mm. I'm guessing it's something along those lines, you know, to, to actually get it to to yeah. do what they're looking for. There, there's no way that they, you know, I, I actually know some of the uh, the Horizon guys at, at that side, and, and I actually worked with some of them when they were at Great Plains. Um, but they were saying, like, it, it's obvious that it looks like the Huna truck. Like, nobody's going to be yeah. no going to deny that. But they were saying that they're like, actually, this this whole thing was underway before that. I'm like, well, I, oh. I don't doubt that. It just with how long it took to develop. But there's no way that you didn't see it and go, oh, there. You, I mean, they called the tires the Hoons, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. and you know, having it so that it rolls smoke, like. There's, there's no way that that wasn't a, uh, on their vision board. Yeah. But, you know. Well, Steve has left us, has he? Yeah, he said he'd give Tony some room or somebody else some room. Tank, Tank's making everyone leave. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am making everybody. Everybody <laughs> shy. Nobody uh, wants to talk to Josh. Uh, no, nah, we're talking to Josh. <laughs> Josh is doing most of the talking, but we're talking to him. <laughs> So then, you know, my real question here is, is Traxxas's response to all of this going to be to slap some tracks on a TRX4 Sport to compete <laughs> with this? I mean, is that yeah. really their answer right yeah. now? That's not what they am. It's, you know, no. I'm, you know. <clears throat> that's those things like that's just, uh, they put all that money into developing the tracks in the first place. And if, if it wasn't already, Probably after the response that they saw that they got when they released them, they, it's such an easy thing to to take those two products and just put them together. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, I hope that the next Traxxas product isn't going to be uh, a new body slapped on a slash, and they tell me that it's new. Yeah, it's yeah. a two point slash. You know, I mm -hmm. I honestly at, th at this point I don't think that it is hard to argue with with Traxxas's model. They, they make a lot of kits. They produce a lot, and they sell more than anybody. It's just like they're, you know, RC is a yeah. tough business to make money in, and honestly, Trax does it almost better than anybody. So, well, yeah, but I think Arma, Arma, Arma has problems. caught up to them. Arma, oh, the Arma not having any problems at all. They're it's flying. A, they're taking yeah. over everything. They're they're doing well for sure, but yeah. Trax is quite the monster to. Uh, you know, in, in terms of like true volume and, and things like that. Yeah, true volume, yeah. It's, uh, there's a lot to it. And, and it's, the, the amount of stuff that Traxxas does is pretty staggering. But that infraction for the price and what it does mm -hmm. for the price, it's, it's, it's crazy. Right. But, you know, at the same time, like, 
it is most of the market though you know is is that those uh you know tracks is selling 199 dollar stampedes with yeah. monster yeah. mud bodies on them and you know it, it like slashes out the door with 250 bucks like they're uh that that's the market that you know they're probably really killing it at the so. infection is um hasn't obviously it's not I don't know when it's been released over there, but it's being released here in August. And I saw a couple of local hobby shops where you can pre-order it, and they're a thousand dollars a pop. Wow! Yeah, here they yeah. can be here available in uh, July, like here in the next week or two. Um, and uh, yeah, they're five ninety nine. Yeah. So. Wow. Because us here in Canada and Australia, oh, wow. we're taking a we we're taking a bite like it. it yep. Exchange rate yep. is just crazy, crazy in Canada and uh, uh, Australia. Yeah. Well, the limitless is six ninety nine. Rolling no, it's, no, it's less than that. It's less than no here in Australia. Oh, dollars. Oh, I was going to say it's like ninety nine. It's like four fifty here. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, our, our, our uh, Aussie dollar at the moment to the US dollar is 70 cents. I think that's the same as 10. Oh, yeah. Can, Canadian as well. Very cool. So uh, we, we, we get kind of just ripped out. So forget about buying uh, these new RCs, that's for sure. So other than the um, VS410, what other stuff does Vanquish has new that's coming out or things to look for? Um, I mean, unless it's on the site, I'm probably not going <laughs> to let any of that out. <laughs> that's just not how this works. <laughs> so close, Tank. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've been doing this for a long time. That's not going to work. <laughs> so... I did. I did want to. Uh, I was in a chat with another channel earlier, kind of a popular channel, and I've been, you know, I've been checking out the VS10 4 Pro, and I'm drooling on it. I got to be honest. But he was telling me that the Gen 8 outcrawled it on Highway One's channel on JJ's course. Hard to say. I mean, if uh, uh, Gen 8 does have portals. Portals, so, yeah, it's about the portal. but portals are, you know, they're they're not in the right application. But also the the Gen Eight just doesn't hold up. Like, That's what I'm working on right now. I blew mine up at the G Six. Yeah, <laughs> I, like I tried to do two videos with mine at this point already, and I didn't make it like 20 minutes into either one, and I blew up the front gears and two like each one replaced it, did it again, blew up the other side, and like. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm digging into, trying to find out what gear I grenaded because one of them let go. It's just, you know, hmm. it's is it's that, a price point, but it's not the same quality by any means. Is that happening with a lot of them? It's they, it happens with almost all of them. It seems like, like oh, I mean, it's suit all, like on the Red Cat groups. I mean, grenading front gears is just just what happens. It's just that's what the thing that they do. Um, wow. You know, some what are you doing yeah. when it grenades? Is there anything that you've noticed? Like if you you said it grenaded twice, right? It didn't Straight matter what you're doing. It, it's wow. any you know, it's just a load that the mm. front gear is a, a bad design with how the cup and the gear is integrated, and it just they end up exploding. It, well, Daniel's saying it's the there's also portal gear. you. That's the one thing about a portal is that you've got those little gears right there at the very end of your reduction. So you put a lot of stress on a gear in that situation where, you know, you can have that same size gear in a transmission and you're going to be much stronger, but you put it out there at the end, you've got a small gear that's not as strong. And then, so you either have to overbuild them, uh, you know, super wide tracks, his gears hold up a lot better. Yeah. I actually, I, I've got four TRX fours. Um, oh. I think three or four. I don't know. Oh, uh, I was just showing the. That's my portal gear that I I blew up. The I've seen with the TRX four people complain about is a stock servo, and that's yeah, you know. yeah, the oh. electronics. Yeah, I mean that's that. 
you know, servos are yeah, stock, right? Stock yeah. servos are, yeah. you know, yeah. anyway, I don't take, yeah, but that's the same thing. You know, I've blown up basically both of my portal gears look like that. And it's just, then the other thing is, is axle housings on those Gen 8s, breaking those, but. Well, you, know, uh, you tested or you did your video, were you driving it hard or what were you doing? I mean, that's, that's a relative question depending on who you are. You know? <laughs> it's, honestly, you know, it's like, yes, and, you know, yeah. if you're yeah. driving on stock motor pretty easy ESC. terrain, what's that? Did you just have the stock motor in ESC? It was stock, stock. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I had know a, John says the Mamba Monster X. Yeah, mine was completely overpowered, so yeah. I can't fault him for that. Uh, uh, brush, the stock brush motor, the stock. I was, I was trying to do a TRX4 Sport and Gen 8 like side by side video, and I actually tried to film it three times. The first time was the <laughs> was all my fault. Why, why the whole thing didn't happen. And that was because I soldered the wrong side of an XP60 plug to my ESD. Oh, no. <laughs> I got out to the field and went to plug it in, and it was just like, oh. Just. <laughs> so that didn't work out. <laughs> and then the next two times I tried it were just, I, it was just the most frustrating situation. I haven't fixed it the second time. It's just still sitting there. Uh. Wow. But, you know, I, portals have their place and they're cool in certain situations and some people will really like them and, and they'll be nice for that situation. I, I uh, like I said, my TRX4, I've got a mud truck version that is sweet. You awesome. Know? Yeah, that thing's cool. It's just like, I, I was like, this, it's already dumb, so I'm going to put the Traxxas lift kit on it, which is even worse, and then those big-ass tires and just had fun with it. Shot a cool video and it was just, I actually had driven it one time. Ever. No, I drew it twice. Um, <laughs> that was it. You know, that was all I ever really had planned for it. And then I've got the, uh, I've got my cust that Bronco that I've got. It's got a an air ride system out of like Russia on it. So <laughs> on a remote control, and it's got a little mini air compressor in it and air shocks. And you can pump it, dump it, whole deal. It's a blast. That's amazing. So, and then I've got the two TRX4 sports, the the kit budget build I'm doing right now, and the my phone stock TRX4 sport. Hmm. So, and and the mud truck built with the monster tires that look good, the mud tires. Yeah, and they're just a really well built truck. So, that's uh, you know, out of any out of any of them like that, that's for the money for the quality. It's it's a hard one to beat, you know, value per dollar. The uh, but it's not also like driving the TRX fours. I I don't love it. <laughs> they're just oh they're really? Top, they're they're a little top heavy. Um, a little. And <laughs> a little, you know, most of the portable trucks are. You know, you raise it up. Fifteen. Oh, you, feel like even the sport, you find the sport is even a little top heavy. The what? Well, the Sport has the lightest body of them all. I, I'm surprised the to hear you. Oh, yeah. Like, if you're looking at, like, the Defender, that thing's just a <laughs> Yeah. He's a pig. I have that thing, and it is completely stock, man. I've had it since the day it came <laughs> out. Huh. And I refuse to change it because, I don't know, it just feels – it feels more real for some reason. Yeah, they they kind of, like, bounce around. And it's kind of, kind of like, yeah. you know, they just yeah, – like Martin stock as well. Yeah, they yeah just, I don't want – it doesn't need to perform too great for me. As long as it does enough, like, get the other ones out right. to perform, but – like everyone's like taking everything off to make it lighter. I'm like, that's why it's so cool. It's got all the the roof racks and the. <laughs> but yeah, you know. Um, but that's the. I'm always trying to, to do you know rock crawling tall ledge like yeah. out here. I have we have such amazing terrain here. Like it's, I, I'm jealous of myself sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so crazy. Like, uh, it just. So going out and finding amazing locations with crazy rock lines is constant. And that TRX4 Sport with, or any yeah. of them with a stock battery position, it, no. if you put a big battery in them, they just want to fall over all the time. And it's just super annoying. So I, I still prefer non-portal trucks for that reason. Yeah. 
I've had the new element for a couple for a month or two now. I don't know, something like that. Um, I'll do like that one. That's a really good truck. Yeah, it's holding up well. Yeah, um, you know, it's it's a solid truck. It's those should be hitting stores next week. Uh, they they people have them in hands here now in the U.S. Oh, so um, and yeah, I mean, it's a uh, it's a good truck. It's very simple. Uh, like design wise and things like that. It's just, it's very basic and simple, you know, there's, uh, but it gets the job done. It's got a transmission. that has got overdrive. It steers really well. It's got a really good stock servo. Yeah. It's got that five slot motor in it. So it's super smooth. What about suspension? I know like team associated was always known. Like we use their suspension and like the monster truck stuff. So, Right, the they're, the shocks on it are are team associated buggy shock and old, you know, so they're they're nice, uh, you know. It's just the body is thin and it tears too easy. Uh, the front bumper and rear bumper are the worst. Uh, <laughs> they're terrible. They're terrible. Terrible. That's if one thing you know. I, I you know I told those guys when we were, uh, you know, I I got to, you know, I. Saw it early, and it was man, the bumpers are bad. Like <laughs> so bad. But there's there's standard bumper, you know, a standard post style bumper, and so there's post style bumper replacements for it, or you can bolt on ones to the outside and just. It's not a, it's not the most innovative truck, but I, it's kind of for a reason. Like, you can use parts that are already made, and they'll bolt. Yeah. On. Yeah. So. They did it. That for was, was tricky when Team Associated came out with their twelve scale stuff. It's like we're getting into the market already. Where nobody else is at. Yeah. Like, we get... And so, that was just a that was a rebranded truck by Thunder Tiger. Right. Um, exactly. Who, so there were one of, parts available from China. And, right. And it's you know that's like their parent company. So they were kind of just like sell this thing. Like, ah. uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Bill Craig in the in the chat is saying that he uh, really enjoys your budget build series. Yeah, <laughs> that's, cool. that's what got me in when I first started a couple years ago. Watching watching your budget builds, I was blown away what you could do. Uh, that's I think this is the fourth one I've done. The I had the Poison Spider Wraith first, and then the Deadbolt and the Bomber, and now the Tracks. So that's uh, he's a Tony's a huge fan of yours, mate. So <laughs> he's a huge uh, fan of yours, uh, Josh. Now the next budget build should be the element. So that that's like a big thing. Is like when it, like a lot of times, like I told Matt like last time when we started this the, with the honcho, you know, that was like the first time I'd worked with Matt on this type of level, um, and I was just like. Get ready after this. Every new truck that comes out, someone's going to say, you should do a budget build. You should do it. But the, and the element is one that's like, it's almost possible to do just because there is so much cross uh, aftermarket that you could do with it. Mm. Uh, but otherwise, that's like the whole problem. It's just like, you can't do it right away because you need a big aftermarket uh, yeah. supply yeah. to be able you know, it's hard to upgrade something with fifty dollars a week, and yeah. like, it, like it, the, it sounds the, it's the worst thing ever to say. Like, it's terrible to say, like, oh, that's not enough money because you know that two hundred dollars a month is more than most people are going to spend on RC. And it's like, I'm not saying you have to do it every, but it's to like segment it up like that. It's tough to make it interesting. Like, if you weren't doing it, if I wasn't doing it for YouTube. You could just you can bolt stuff on and be like, oh, that's all I got done this week. But when you're trying to do it for YouTube, you're like, I want to bolt on this one part, and that's going to be the most boring three minute video you've ever seen. So you have to like, come up with some other crazy crap to do just to make it somewhat watchable. Bill Craig is asking or telling Josh that these poison spiders where I found you, Josh, but oh. one and came across your videos for the upgrades. That, that's a. Uh, Man, Wraith? I'm surprised. Yeah, the Poison Spider Wraith, the uh, way back when. It, going back and seeing some of like my old videos like that, I see it and I'm just like, oh, God, I can't believe anybody watched still. Like, it, it, 
you know, my audio is bad. I sound like I'm half asleep when I'm talking. I sound so uninterested. But I, you know, I appreciate. It. There's a, a, I would say most more people say they found the channels and stuff through budget build stuff than any other series. Uh, it, it's a, it's the most appealing, and I get that. It's. I'm saying that was over three years ago. Oh yeah, way over. It was. Yeah. What it? it was five or six years ago at least. Twelve fish for Wraith? Had to be twelve. Eleven or twelve. Bought. Let's see, must have been twelve, because I bought my house in twenty eleven, and I did that series in the shop, and I didn't build that shop until uh, like the winter, spring of twelve. So, hmm. yeah, that was. I'm happy to report that my Gen Eight frontal gears survived, and. Uh, so the plastic gears actually held up to the Mamba X brushless power, and uh, the only thing I found that was wrong was my pinion slipped. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably saved the tranny. Uh, Are people blown up here? RC, Mar mask, uh, mm. uh, Master, RC mask Master is asking, how many things do I need to grease in the TRX-4? Can you name everything that he needs to keep greased up in there? I mean, front and rear portals, because they can come a little light on grease out of the from out of the box. Um, you don't need to do the actual joints of the axle shafts, but you need to do the ring gears, front and rear, and then you might as well open up the transmission, and do the transfer case and the inner portion. It's a, you know always nice to do, but at the same time, it's just like. Probably not going to hurt anything. You can drive it anyway. Yeah. Let's turn brush power. Like, just wait till it gets loud and then open it up. Exactly. You know, <laughs> some, sometimes it's the opposite of that. Sometimes it's like it got too quiet for a while. Like, oh. Everything got a little too worn in. You're like, ah. <laughs> it's right before. It's when it gets too quiet, but that's when it gets, starts to get too loud afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> that the element is so quiet. Oh yeah. It and I was I was just amazed at how quiet it was. And then I opened it up and it's got a forty eight pitch pinion spur. I'm like, that makes a huge difference. Uh, yeah. I would prefer a thirty two pitch, but it's uh it's got that super quiet forty eight pitch. So I'm used hmm. to all my stuff sounding like a chainsaw because I'm running with you know, big brushless on 4S and metal drive shafts. And... So that truck has a fairly traditional slipper setup? Yeah. It? Yeah. It's got the slipper pad setup. I think it's pretty, I, I think that it's similar to how Associated does it on some of their other stuff, but I don't know because I've never really played with other, I, you know, I'm not a racer. I have no idea about any of that stuff. Now, will you guys ever come out with a portal axle uh, VS410? It's a possibility. It's just, you know, people who have to want to, it costs more to build portals. So, yeah, you know. Becomes uh, a cost issue. But does the portal have a offset? I don't think you have any of the portal that have the offset. Right. That would be the thing. It's like it would, cr it would, ha it would require a whole different front axle to do it. So, you'd have it to would develop only your truck then, right? It so, would really right. only work for that. Yeah. The other thing is, is that we we released the VS410 chassis separately a, a month or two ago, um, and those have actually been going really well. People really like those because you can bolt them right into any SDX102, um, and it gives you more suspension travel. You get an aluminum pan hard mount, so. If you just upgrade the pan hard or shock towers on your SCX102, you're half the cost of a, mm. a whole new chassis set, um, and it has a lower, you know, a lower battery position, a better center of gravity. But if you had that, then you could, you know, theoretically, if we had we're selling offset axles, you can just bolt them right under it and work fine. Um, so you kind of like step your way to your own VS410 if you wanted, which is what you can do now. You know, we sold the 
we sell the offset axles that were under the first one separately. We sell the chassis separately. And then you can put a standard three gear transmission in it, you know, out of your SCX 10 2, whatever you want to do. And it's just a, you can go that way if you want, if that's the type of thing. Or I just, I took one of my old SCX 10 2s and just did a direct swap and enjoyed driving it a little bit more. Well, the flexibility is a big thing with us builders that we built a whole bunch of different things uh, uh, with them. Mm -hmm. So having parts for us to Frankenstein and make our own is awesome. Uh, yeah. I like that you guys do that also. Yeah, you know, it's the, the DS410 chassis, I've, I've had a blast with. You know, it's it's similar to like custom stuff that I'd done before when I had an FTX10 chassis and I cut off the front and made a high. Uh, a high clearance style. I called that truck uh, crispy. That's what I called it. Yeah, I remember that. You know, but it was, it's very similar. I cut off the front, and made a big higher arc, and that was, you know, I, I want the trucks to, to ride low, and the, the other guys here, you know, Brandon is who is who's responsible for actually designing and drawing most of the stuff, and uh, you know, they agree as well. Brandon and I have similar styles in a lot of ways. He's got a lot more. He's got a lot more style, and I have a lot more opinion. So, <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he's super talented at the design side. So he did. He does a great job. Uh, and then you know, Jim does most of the, you know, the actual machining and all. He does all the actual machining. He's the Ripper machinist, and so he. Uh, him and Brandon both design the gyms, you know, a lot of it has to change when it goes to machining. So the axles and all that are super cool. Cool. Yeah. And I just I just make videos and yell at people. <laughs> I have opinions all day. I have opinions all day. It sounds like you got the best job then. Right. <laughs> you guys need to work. I'll just uh, take credit for it on YouTube. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you ever miss your old job compared to what you're doing now? Nah. It's, uh, days go by pretty fast when you're playing with cars at work, you know? Yeah, I guess it would. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, California. I will say I miss the Midwest. Uh, Whenever you can smile and talk about work, that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, work is, work is great. I, I actually really enjoy work. Like, you know, there's always bad days but it's not usually because of the work it's because of you know, it's always tough to find employees um, you know we're not a big shop so it's like the employees that we have they need to do what they're supposed to be doing <laughs> you know yeah. having people who don't want to just watch TV on their phone while they're supposed to be working attitude issues or you know, okay. Just come to work. <laughs> so, Go to your then, local hobby shop and find somebody. I bet they'd be pretty uh, wanting to do that. You know, that's like always that. That's always that. Uh, so, but they get to sit and talk to people all day and just talk about RC and. Or, or just the fact that it's like when someone's way into the hobby like that, it's like there's concerns about what you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> You never know. We've got two guys that are that handle like all the shipping and uh, like customer service side and things like that. Uh, Dan Wilson, who most people know on you know Facebook or whatnot, he uh, Dan's a you know, he's a great employee and he he knows his stuff and he's just he's the guy you can ask to do whatever you need done and you might have to ask him two or three times because he forgot, but he'll get it done. It's, he's just he's getting old, you know. So. <laughs> and, uh, and Michael, Michael Fan, who's he's a talented RC guy in general, uh, knows the product really well, and he handles customer service, and he just he's pretty on top of it. So having those two guys in there handling all of that side is great. Mm -hmm. But you, know, you just you're always got to worry about you know bringing somebody new in that you don't know. Yeah. I was worried, I'll be honest, when you went over to the Vanquish, you know, I knew you were running their stuff and a lot of their products anyway, but that, like, that's all we were going to start seeing, especially oh, yeah, when they came out with the truck. You know, I'm like, oh, no, is he only going to ever talk about the Vanquish trucks now, or is he going to 
continue right. to like the nice thing is that you make products for other vehicles as well that work right. you know and so you can show pop-ups and that but i was there was that moment where i'm like oh no <laughs> oh of course and it's you know honestly it's the biggest conflict of interest for me you know it's just like you know but it, in the end i'm still just an rc guy i just want to play with everything I, and the other guys know that as well it's just you know i i work for an rc company who make our own kit but you know, Element sent me their new truck early before it was announced or released. You know, it's just like well, that's a conflict. And but the other thing is, is that RC is a small world. Yeah, uh, you know, it it's, like, is. it's a hobby. It's it's a small world and it's a hobby first. It's just like the people who are actually working in it full time. You know, like we we know each other. We if you if you burn bridges. There's, there isn't that many ways to go. There's not that many bridges. So, yeah. and you know, you'll, you'll even see it on, on YouTube side, you know, like that, like you, you burn a bridge with a manufacturer. Well, you burn that bridge, but likely somebody who worked at that manufacturer is going to go to a different manufacturer. And now, <laughs> now you've got both of those burned. And, well, and then with YouTube though, you've got to worry about the people. Like if you want them to keep watching videos, like, oh. and I don't know how important that is. Like, as far as because you've got you know the work with it but like for the rest of us it's like well we have to be completely honest if something's bad otherwise right. people won't ever watch your next video because they think you're going to lie about what the product actually is like yeah, I mean, red, red you're cat serving the, the big corporation you know right you know red cat sent me to gen 8 early um and i just I, I, there's things about it i don't like and i have just set them you know it's there's things about the element that I don't like, you know. I have to say, you know, I, the bumpers are a terrible design. <laughs> the body's too thin and it tears too easy. But the drivetrain on it's solid, you know. That's nice. Uh, the shocks. It's like uh, you know, the axial cars. I still really like the axial cars. You know, people get all crazy about Horizon hurting this and that about axial, and I, you know, I'm not on that bandwagon. I, I think that Verizon actually, the other thing is like if people knew how bad some of that stuff was going to be, like Verizon coming in and actually moving the brand forward is a huge yeah. save for us hobbyists. Yeah. Well, and then also they, they, like if, if they want to move anything new forward, once they get the company, you're talking 15 months to yeah. start a product and get it to, to market. Right. So oh, yeah, oh, they're wow. only working with whatever was in production stages already. Right. Yeah. So, you know, like, yeah, okay. it's just. There's a, there's a question for you, Josh. I'm just reading the chat here. But uh, yeah. ask me, Voodoo, ask, what do you like about the Gen 8? Scout body. Bounce the body. Like cool. cool. No, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, you I just said you like scout bodies. <laughs> I like scout <laughs> 800s. Like, 80s and 800s scout. I never liked the scout. <laughs> 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 so they even got the wrong body for you. Um, let's see. So the, the battery position is actually lower than the TRX4. Like that's a bonus. Yeah. The motor is higher though, which I, I didn't care for. Um, the plastic gears in the transmission are 32 pitch at least, so they're not they're not bad. Um, the bump on the bottom of the skid plate is the biggest design oversight I've ever seen. And just like, like why that got passed is just, it's like one of those things where it's like, obviously the engineers are not in tune with the market. Like to let that go by is un unexcusable. Mm. Um, but what they did do is they got a, a product done with a number of features that are hard to match for the dollar, you know? Yeah. Got portal axles. It's got bead locks. Um, it's got a forward-mounted motor. You know, those are those are big. Those are big things. Yeah. The bumpers on it don't suck. That's a bonus. They're um, nice and thick. The bumpers. That's what about the body attachment? Uh that's that's not bad. I mean, it, you know, a lot. Some people aren't super hot on Velcro, and it's not something I would do personally. Um, but with how those inner fenders kind of key into the other set of inner fenders and you can kind of center it, like I get what they were going for there and that, that you know, I, I, it's clean. It doesn't have body pins. Like that's a feature that, and people like them. 
Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know how it holds up long term because I haven't been able to drive mine long term. Um, but I, you know, I. I so I, I don't know how that holds up. But like on the outside looking in, that's not bad. Yeah, uh, I was just talking to a company. And the, the thing that gets me and that you guys do right is if an RTR is what, like tracks us, so many of them now are putting stickers for the windows. I hate like that. if they're looking at the scale market. What are people doing with their cars? I know. I I don't ever get that either. That that was the you know Red Cat did it, Traxxas did it, but now Traxxas on the new uh, the Trax version. That one's clear. Uh, the Bron do do you want do the what Bronco the or Blade? Clear? That, um, it are they? The Bronco had clear front. Yeah, and the Blazer clear has front. clear. On the Blazer, it's clear, and on yeah. the new uh, TRX4 tracks, it's clear. Right. So Blazer is clear, and TRX4 is clear. My uh, my the Bronco I have it, it was a. a clear body that someone bought. I actually bought that second hand and then put the air ride stuff on. Uh, but you know, it's like Red Cat, Red Cat put something out there that is a, when you're just looking at features to, to dollar, it's hot. Yeah. Um, well, one, one thing I, that surprised me about the Red Cat was that integrated receiver box, it has not no steel. Like, it's not waterproof at all. I know. So, it's just like, it looks like, it looks like it's going to be, yeah. wait, oh, yeah. and yeah. no, it's here. There's a little lip down here at the bottom of the receiver, yeah. and the lid just clips on top, but there's no gasket seals yeah. at all. I mean, it's got holes all over it, so it right. will 100% leak. Oh, yeah. It's not even like it's not even remotely waterproof. But yeah. what I do like about that thing is I do like the whole little short extension into the plug-in on the outside. Like, yeah. that was... If it was an actual waterproof box and it had that... Like, yeah, that would be super cool. I actually like that feature. Yeah. Um, and some of the some things that I don't like, like I'm a, I'm more performance oriented than than a lot. But so I personally I prefer the Lexan interfender that we have like on the Origin stuff. But I get where people will like the look or the style or feel of the super rigid ones that are on the Red Cat or the TRX4. But at the same time, like the TRX4 ones are super bulky and big and like bunch of weight. The Red Cat ones are kind of the same, but I think they're better than the TRX4 in that regard. Yeah, it's much lighter, that's for sure. So, um, you know, it's just, you know, overall, it's it's got a lot of check marks. It just, I don't, the durability for me, it, it makes it a, a deal killer. Hmm. So... You know, but if I, I, put, uh, if I put metal gears in that front gearbox, it should it should hold up, or is there some other weak spot? So a machine gear option, I think, which I think somebody's working on, like Club Five maybe. Uh, you know that should help. Uh, the bearing sizes in that thing, like if you really tried to like match it to like strength to strength, some of these like a like a TRX four. I think you would end up having to go so far into it to like really match it in the end. Granted, that's if you're running a lot of power compared, you know, like some of us do. Um, you know, like some of like the inner pinion bearings are like seven by fourteen or seven by eight by twelve or something, something kind of teeny tiny. You know, where where we're seeing big beefy bearings on the inner pinion of a lot of these vehicles now because that's where a ton of stress happens. Yeah. Yeah, but I'll if you put axles really. on that thing, maybe we got a different story, right? What's that? Put some vanquish axles on that thing. But is the <laughs> red cat, is are are the most of the red cat owners who are looking <laughs> purchasing it because of that price point going to spend five hundred dollars on a set of vanquish foils? Like probably not. And yeah. you know what? It's just not, they're not for everyone. I get that. <laughs> like, I'm not saying you got to buy them. We're, we we have to try and keep up as it is. You're not going to please everybody. Like, yeah, I, I was just you, people yeah. can upgrade the axles. Yeah. So. Austin Vood is saying, think about how many people buy Red Cat to get into the hobby, and then go on and uh, go on to buy Vanquish products. But I don't right. know about that, Harley, because that's the or, same price as a as a SCX10 almost when people right. got in. How many people put? Vanquish axles under their, ax their axial right. stuff. 
People start in slow, and then they start, you know, they yeah. murder up their trucks until they're like twelve hundred in. So the other thing that the, the flip side of that same argument is like people who decide to buy brand X, whatever that one is, yeah. and it's an unreliable truck, mm -hmm. and they break it every time they go out. Yeah. Do they continue on? Which I'm not saying that there hasn't been a number of axials that broke almost every. The, honestly, the first Wraith was was kind of that way. Like mm. the twenty turn motor was way too fast, and you burned them up almost immediately if you didn't regear the truck. You know, it was just the mm. dog bones on the first Wraith would allow it to oversteer because it had plastic links, right? So it flop over, and then it would flop over. The dog bone would pop out, spin around, grab the dog bone cup, and break a C hub. So the drive casts that came on those were before the Wild Boar HDs, and those things were like Twizzlers. You just spin them, you know. It's just like it was one thing after another. They were thirty or forty-eight pitch pinion and spur, um, and they just that thing was like Axial's first truck that they were showing as a rock racer. Like that, I think that's what it said on the box. Yeah, um, and it was not ready for that. That should have had a. 55 turn motor and a Tamaya plug. I think it had a Tamaya plug. <laughs> yeah, it did have a Tamaya plug. Even worse. It's not for you. <laughs> oh, that's so, funny. So, you know, you always have to worry about people who spend money on get in and then get so frustrated and have to buy this money pit that they just put it in the garage and then never touch it again. Right. Yeah. So, well, again, I think that's where Traxxas does a good job in a lot of ways. Minus that whole twenty seventy five servo, like. But, <laughs> but I mean, that's just it. As a consumer, and buying these products that have failed on me, and then right. I turn around and I look at your product. I mean, I mean, it, I, it, I see quality way. when I look at it. You know, like and it, I, you should for the price, right? Like I'm hoping so. If I if I spent a thousand dollars on my DJI <laughs> Mavic and it fell out of the sky the first flight, I'd be pissed. So that was one question that I did have for you, uh, because I am I'm new to it. What would be the customer service and like warranty I could expect? <laughs> right. Um, I mean, for the most part, there, there's some too many things that, that we don't cover, you know? There's some stuff that you can break that's just like, hey, but you know, you, you're gonna have to, <laughs> you're gonna have to buy a replacement part. Like, like mm. it's not an unlimited lifetime bumper to bumper, but right. you know, like we've had we've had someone um, break an axle, not on a VS4 axle, but on like the old SCX102 axles. Um, they got a little thin at the C hub in some of the earlier ones, and people broke axle housing. and it's like, you know what? Sorry, we'll replace it. Um, you know, it's if if certain things break, most you know, it's like happy to happy to do whatever we can. Um, within within reason, right? Uh, but I think for the most part, it, it's much more than you would be able to to find any other company that does. I was there. trying to crawl up the Grand Canyon and I made it to the top, and then I just slipped. <laughs> we, we had a guy. We had a guy who. This was back in when we were making SLW wheels for like the comp crawler stuff, and he was like, "Hey, uh, I was doing this and that, and I ended up." tumbling down this hill over and over and over. And it was like, it was, evidently it was a sizable hill. He bent a wheel, like actually bent the face of it. Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> it was when, when I think that there was only like six or seven employees here. And I think it was back then they said, did you get it on video? Like, yeah, here. They're like, cool. All right, send them a set of wheels back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, but the ones that you always, you always wonder about is like, it was, I was just driving on the carpet for a test, and it exploded. Like, <laughs> <laughs> probably did. Deep gashed but, it all over the body. You know, yeah. It, you know, if people are honest for the most part. We, we do what we can. It's there is no black and white. You know, there's a gray in every situation, which is tough. And it's, but you know, mistakes happen. Manufacturing defects happen. We try and do what we can to make people happy and get a value for their dollar. 
It's now, Tony, I'm going to mute you in a minute. Uh, Josh, there's, there are people asking stuff in the chat, but Tony just completely hijacked this. <laughs> 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 now, RC Voodoo says, think about how many people buy Red Cat to get into the hobby and then go on to buy Vanquish products. Right. We covered that one. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, no one really wants to buy that. Well, no one, no yeah, one really... <laughs> no one really wants to buy a nine hundred dollar first rig when just trying out the hobby. Oh yeah, absolutely. I I probably wouldn't either. I wouldn't recommend a VS four ten pro to beginners. That no, seems silly. Yeah. At the same time, it's like well, we have kind of logic though, isn't it? We have a lot of people who do. Like we have a lot of people honestly we have a lot of people who the Ripper was their first R C. Um and I don't know if you know that one that we made. You know, that's a it's a nineteen hundred dollar chassis. Not even the full chassis. You got to bolt it to another set of chassis rails. You know, but it was it's on the side of people who, um, who are have the means to pay that kind of money, and they understand it for what that project was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, the project was more of an art project than anything. Like that was the most ridiculous thing, and it was meant to be ridiculous. You know, that's that's all. We were only going to make nine of them, like, right? To start with, it was we were just doing it for Axial Fest and because we wanted to. And so it's a thing. It's like so the VS four tens. We've had a lot of first time buyers with that because they are they do well enough that the money side of it is something that they're comfortable with, and they want to buy it and put it together and have a really nice experience doing it and take it out and have fun and not have problems. So it's all relative, you know, for, for me, I, I would love to go. I would love to get back into full size rock crawling, but for me, most likely that means a Jeep and, you know, a lift and then some tires and then, a, a, you know, some, some body armor and blah, blah, blah. Where there's some guys who want to get into full size rock crawling, and they're just going to go buy a hundred thousand dollar buggy. Yeah, you know, that's it's just the difference between what some of us, you know. Maybe no, someday. was it last year or the year before that you actually went to a one to one full size rock crawling and you were uh, spotting for somebody? So I stopped spotting in 2015. How long ago, really? Yeah, because I stopped spotting when I moved. Because uh, I, we ran We Rock back in the Midwest, um, so you know, and then I think the la I did a video when we went to nationals. Um, we we ran We Rock nationals in 2015 um, in Potemkin, Texas, and then we had done we had competed at nationals in 2013, I think. Uh, two different vehicles. Um, but we we competed with uh, the the team was called Come Get You Some, and they had got into racing uh, more like Ultra Four Side, and they still had their crawler, and basically for uh, sponsorship uh, to still like you know make the sponsors happy that they gave them all these parts and things like that and support. Uh, we ran their Jeep TJ through the year. And then before that, we were uh, crawling with a. It was a Geo Tracker, actually. Oh, very cool! And it, that was actually, and I actually did a video on that too. And I think that was that was 2013. Uh, but that was a fun little tracker to compete with. I mean, it was a super well built, just like the TJ was. Uh, but I really enjoyed, honestly, because I was spotting. I wasn't driving. Uh, it was really a lot like RC crawling, because you're just. It's just. You tell him what to do, and he does it. So there's, it's just like driving an RC car, if there's a delay, and it hurts more when it falls. But you know, like there, it was a lot of fun. It was just you look for your line, and you try and tell him to do the line that you're trying to envision. And I mean, that's so much fun. So, now, you, you 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 build a couple of Ultra Four uh, trucks for racing. Uh, how do you like that category compared to crawling? Oh, you mean RC, right? Yeah. Um, I'm terrible at racing. 
I don't. I shouldn't. Unless I can run behind it, like it's just not for me. I do. <laughs> I uh, there's Michael Pham, our well, you know, like our head of customer service and shipping, and all that. He is a he wins. He just goes to nationals. He just wins the classes he enters. Uh, he's a hell of a driver. Um, I'm I'm not kidding. I think that he could beat me in a race if he only drove reverse. Like well, he isn't. He isn't. Maybe it's he, because he you're using Futaba. Futaba. Maybe it's because you're using Futaba. And so, it's uh oh man. <laughs> I just do not. I do not need this. <laughs> but so yeah, and honestly, the the U four RC stuff kind of died. Oh yeah. It, it came and went pretty fast. You know, there's yeah, still it did come pretty fast in that. Yeah. There's probably only a, a couple dozen guys who still do it in California, which is where most of it was happening. So we don't have uh, a U4 race at, our, uh, at Sailfest, I'd assume. Uh, yeah, so they have like uh, what do they call it, a terror cross or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Which is a little bit different rules and things like that. And, you know, it's it's you know we'll see. But, is the tear cross where you run where the driver runs behind the truck? So I think what they're doing actually is they've got like a, a an area, you know, like if, if this pit mat is the the course, the the gray box on the outside would be you have to stay in this and your truck drives around the outside. So you're actually moving, but you can't leave the I think they called it the driver's donut. Yeah. Huh. So. At the G six they actually had us do that. Yeah. It's all you're all within a circle or within a certain right. spot. You can't leave that, and you have to race. I, and, I think uh, that's basically you know, pretty much the same, and that's pretty much how Axial Fest has been ran. So yeah. uh, I think G Six is just basically adopting those same rules, and then they're going to use that at Axial Fest. So yeah, it looks like Parker is going to be back at Axial Fest. Yep. Which is which is good for him. That's what he was telling us at the G6. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, it'll be interesting. We'll see how how it goes. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think it's good that they've got the the Horizon team there to to get it organized. So. Yeah. That that that's definitely important. So, the. Uh, you know, it's it's nice that Axial Fest is only like an hour and a half away. <laughs> for you? It, yeah, it's. Oh. You know, I don't, I don't have to go far for it. It's a easy trip. We were up there. We were up at Cisco Grove last weekend, so we were doing some full size, full size jeeping last weekend. But yeah, it's uh. Cisco Grove was sold, right, last year? Yes. Yeah, it's sold. Uh, so we drove through it last weekend, like I said. And, um, you can see they've done a bunch of work. Yeah, they've got new electrical service to all the sites and new water service to the sites. And, but other than that, it looks pretty much the same. So at least from what we could see from the, the vantage point we had, uh, I'm sure there's more work going on in the areas that I couldn't see. <laughs> I'll see you, <laughs> Uh, RC Woodoo said is Harley a ESP <laughs> fanboy? A what? ESP fanboy. Fanboy. ESP. What is ESP? Oh, it's uh, Joshua Elliott. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I watch some of his stuff as well. Um, not that many of us doing this stuff. There's. You're gonna you're gonna know most of them, right? Yeah, that's true. We used to have that series on Saturday mornings too. We put out that was pretty nice. What was that? That the uh, the scale one, the scale one. Yeah, scale builder. Yeah. Right. I didn't watch that one as much just because it was a little bit longer. Um, so, but I mean, they, they pop. I've subscribed. They pop up. I still, you know, like I said, there's a small world, right? Yeah. It's, uh, I, I will say that most of the stuff I watch on YouTube is not RC, but 
I, well, you 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 work with it all day, so I do. Uh, I, you know, most of the stuff I watch on on uh, YouTube is like PC building and full size drag racing, <laughs> or you know, I don't know, it's uh some of the some of the vlogging stuff is nerdy as that sounds. Talking about drag racing, how's that deadbolt? How's that deadbolt of you yours doing? Is it dead? It, no, it's still on the shelf. I'm. I will revisit that one. I'm. I'm. I want to do that one again. Yeah, my uh, my my YouTube feed is. Let's see, Linus Tech Tips, which is like PC building mainly. Uh, Thirteen twenty video, which everybody knows, right? Um, Peter McKinnon, he's like a videographer who does. Uh, he's just a. He's a really talented videographer. I I really enjoy his stuff. And then, you know, rock bouncers and redneck stuff. Do you do Redbeard's Garage? I don't watch that one. That's I watch nice. like uh, I'm a I'm a fan of uh, Cletus McFarland, so I, I like those guys and uh, 1320. Um, and I also watch some like the car review stuff. Doug Demiro and Hoobie's Garage. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. <laughs> yeah, Hoobie. Yeah, I, I like. He's just he's goofy, and I like. He's, he's so goofy. goofy. He's not. He's not far from where I'm. Where I was from in Kansas City, so it's fun to watch it. You know, um, and just Tavarish. Big fan of Tavarish and all his uh, Lambos and crazy stuff. And and then my last one. I'll get off that whole topic. Is one called VinWiki, which is all just like car stories, uh, mainly car yeah, stories. I never, you're just a big fan of storytelling things like that. VinWiki is a good one to watch. But anyway, that's enough about non RC. I'm sure, I'll bore <laughs> people with that stuff later. <laughs> busted Knuckle, what's that? Anyone know what Busted Knuckle is? Yeah, Busted Knuckle is like rock bouncing stuff mainly. Mud oh, okay. bombing, but they're, they do cool stuff. Yeah. Mud, yeah. yeah. Busted Knuckle and Mad Ram 11. Yeah, that's uh, RC Voodoo, what he likes. Yep, they're fun. I mean, that's some entertainment stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah. Glass glass. Sometimes you take a nasty spill. Yeah, I, I've been to a couple of the full-size events. It's it's rowdy in person. It must be noisy. I, and, I mean, they just keep getting crazier and crazier. You know, some of those guys are running 1,500-plus horsepower now. Mm. They're getting closer and closer to like a power and weight of an RC car. <laughs> so, and Do they, uh, Basha Boy, Basha Boy's made an appearance. Mm -hmm. And Basha Boy RC's there. Oh yeah, there he is. Do they glass customs? And then yeah, course, tonight, before you came on, we actually talked about the Traxxas, uh, the new Traxxas tracks. Um, we were waiting for you to come on to talk about the Vanquish stuff, and also we talked about uh, the um, <coughs> the new uh, vehicle from Element. Mm -hmm. So those were the three main ones that we talked about tonight. Yeah. Maybe the tracks ones makes more sense for you guys up there in the, the winter. Areas. In the winter, yeah, it'd, it'd be awesome to see how it's actually gonna um, go in the winter because when the tracks came out, it was just after winter, so nobody could actually try it. See, I I can actually see snow on the mountain basically from here. Like I could go up to them, but it's cold up there, and I don't want. <laughs> it's cold here too. In the winter, it's cold here too. It's hard on the batteries. And the I'm just saying, like right now, like if there's still snow up there. I can okay. see it. <laughs> I just, I don't want to go up there. Like, uh, come on. On. So. I wanted to join tonight, but I'll be busy all weekend. Now I was uh, kept. I didn't catch the boy is busy again. Yep. Yeah, we're expected to have snow in the high country until August this year. Yeah, I've heard that, uh, some of the ski resorts out here are talking about skiing almost till August. Yep. Oh, really? And uh, which you know, Axial Fest is held at Donner Ski Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
you know, I, I, I think, I mean, already I could go up to Donner right now and have terrain to run on pretty well. Terrain is not going to be a shortage at the new location. Like that's Donner crawling is pretty epic. Like it's, it's one of the places around here that's, I mean, has amazing terrain to go see. Uh, there, it's just some of like the other, honestly, like the crawling at Donner is probably better than Cisco, but it doesn't have, you know, the camping where everybody's together and having a good time like that. It's the other things that surround it that are going to make it more difficult. So. Were you just at the Kane K one event after Horizon Fest? Did you end up going there? Yeah, did. Uh, yeah, we we had a whirlwind Midwest tour. We uh, I flew into St. Louis, and we got there at, like we had a direct flight from Sacramento. We got there at, like two or three. Like we need to eat, so we stopped to get something to eat. And I was with Steve, and he's like, "Let's stop at the casino for a buffet." I was like, Fuck. And, so we stopped at a casino in St. Louis, and uh, I hit like two grand on a slot machine. So <laughs> I was like, "Well, this is a great start to a trip." <laughs> so that so I had I had money burning a hole in my pocket when I went to Horizon Fest and saw an infraction for sale. So you know that had to make it happen for that reason. But we we actually had a dealer event at. Horizon the day before our sea fest, so that's what we were there for, and we only stayed at at uh, our sea fest for like four or five hours, and then we got in the car and drove to Ohio, and did K and K. What would that be? Saturday and then Sunday morning, and then drove back from Ohio to St. Louis to fly out on Monday. Ouch! So yeah, it was like twelve hundred miles of driving, but. <laughs> I'm K and K was a great event though. It was fun. Um, it looked they, awesome. You know, they they sure have to put in a lot of work to create the courses. You know, it's like you know, there's just there isn't terrain there, so they have to build it. And it's a lot of work. <laughs> Someone sneeze. Yeah, Maybe. Where was it? Where well, was it? Eleven Charlie. Bless you, brother. Levin, Charlie, you've been quiet tonight. Yeah, I've been sick. He's not feeling the best. I'm scared. <laughs> I don't have to be scared. We're all no. movies. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, Frank. Just, I've been feeling it's good. Chilling. It's chilling, mate. Yeah, I'm chilling. Chilling like a villain. Well, Scott's the same. Scott's quiet, but he's having a ball in the chat. <laughs> Scott, good talk with the chat. Scott, what's the outcast, bro? Outcast is on his mind, mate. He's just uh, hypnotized at the moment. You know, I hey, know. Have you, you know, shut the, <laughs> shut, shut, shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> shut the hell up. It, it, it'll be there on Monday, bro. <laughs> it'll be there on Monday. <laughs> so Josh, well, what kind of uh, bashers do you have? Do you have any bashers? Any like slash or um, to bash with? I've got. So I guess we. I've got a. Do I have? I have a a uh, out an arm outcast that I bought. I bought because of uh, <laughs> I was going down to Monster Dan Monster Truck of Palooza Pro Line event last year, and I was just going to go and hang out. And I was like, ah, I should buy a truck just to just to have, and had a blast with it. But I've driven it like three times in two years. Um, and then, I mean, I guess you call the infraction a basher, right? Well, some like people a, do. Tony uh, does. Basher. Yeah, basher. Um, Overheat it if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can tell. I mean, things. It definitely They're seems sealed like up it. tight. Yeah, <laughs> and man, <laughs> when you after you're done driving it inside, is just covered in rubber dust. Mm. Like, um, yeah, and then uh, I don't know if I have anything else. I just picked up a uh, Kyosho Inferno GT. Wow, that's nice. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's but, nice. But cool. it's nitro, 
Yeah. Oh. Okay. Which I never. So, which is it's actually it's for a reason, but it's the first nitro I've ever owned. Um, well, the Kyosha nitros go pretty good, you know. So, it's a it's like it's it's for a, a, a specific series. So, it's uh, the the next victim. <laughs> but we'll. Uh, We'll see how it goes. Should be a fun one. But I got to figure out how to use the stupid method. I'm super not not excited about that part of it. Hmm. Are you going to use the nitro and have to break it in and everything? Yep. It's got it. Per, per the rules, it will have to stay in there. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> You ever broken in an ultra tiny? No, I've seen people do it, and I said I'd never own one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would. Just, I would just, not have bought. Right. I definitely wouldn't have bought one. But it's, it's, uh, yeah. It was because of that reason, basically, because I've I've never owned one, and then it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah, but you oh, you know, here comes them. Them. <laughs> We can so, we can outdo them. Yeah, we can. For nitro here, there's too much temperature change from the morning to the evening and all that. Yeah. So you're always idling and checking your screws yeah. and air yeah. into all the time. I well, fully. Right. It is, it's the same thing. The humidity changes. You're gonna do this. You're gonna do that. Yeah, you can tune your car up and take it to a new racetrack, and everything's got to be changed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I like putting a battery, plug it in, turn on the power, go. That's it. Well, that's it. That too, oh, sure. hey, but that, for the sound and everything with petrol cars and nitro cars, they, they sound fantastic. <clears throat> they, oh, they're yeah. awful. You don't like it? <laughs> 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 uh, 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 uh. I reckon they sound no, great. It, it, it'll be, I think it'll be fitting for this, and uh, I fully plan to cheat, so... <laughs> is this for like me. It gives me a headache. I can't even stand the smell of it. Yeah. Is it for rice you're doing, Josh? Something like that. Okay, you don't want to let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I'm not the only one who got one. Okay. Huh. It's, uh, it's a no. fifth scale? <laughs> it's a seven. It's an eight What's scale, it? they call it. Well, you're, but it, 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 it's John, it's not going to make it go faster. It's what? what you're doing to it right now is not going to make it go faster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're right. going to go on a trip with me tomorrow, so I got to make it look presentable. <laughs> oh, okay, guys, plane in the morning. Everyone's catching planes lately. I see Vudi see, had a plane. Now, I wanted to get the UDR, and I still do, except the battery trays. I refuse to do the Traxxas <laughs> battery trays where it has to fit in a, a design slot for it. Like those it armor really ones that, yeah. that can be resized in the Velcro, like the yeah, Velcro battery compartment on the UDR sucks. So. Come on, I love my battery tray, you guys. Gee whiz! <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks very much for bringing that out, John. Uh, just reminded me that they're fourteen hundred dollars here. Thanks very much for that, buddy. We know how much you're going. <laughs> thanks very much, John. I just wanted to see a UDR that I can't even. How much were they in Australia? Uh, Fourteen hundred bucks here. Fourteen hundred. Whoa! Yeah. Oh my god! Wow! That is crazy. Insane. Well, you know, the, the good smaller news, the vehicle, the, the the smaller place you can run your car in. You don't have to go to some big old lot. That, to run that your is car. true. You need a lot of land for the thing. <laughs> yes. I, I, I like use up a whole farmer's field when I run it every time. <laughs> it, it could be, you know, California. At least the cars are cheap, but. You know, rents three grand. So. What did you pay for yours, John? Because you're in Canada and their currency is the same. What did you pay for that? Yeah, I got this as a shelf model, never run, just old stock from a hobby store, $800 Canadian. Oh, there you go. Wow. At $600 off. Yeah. Wow. No, they run like That's almost $400 in Canada plus tax. But now, yeah. if you buy one new, you get a light kit with it, $100. Two hundred dollar value or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. whole light thing. Yeah, I got the light well, kit. Uh, Jack, it's uh, so he's got the light kit on his. Yep. I don't know why my screen's not showing up when I talk. I like Maybe light kits about as much as I like nitro. 
<laughs> I can never keep them going. I rip something out. Like I spend all this time getting it in there and then like rip something out and have to repair it every time I run it. Like my low C five T the 2.0. I had that thing. What? Four jumps and the light bar went out. Mm. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Any, yeah. Anything, anything fifth scale. That's yeah. Bad news. Well, well, I love you so. No, I love you. I just, man, it's a, uh, I had a five B that was it. And just, and then you know, like we, we have here in the shop, a five B and a five B. T, the HPI and a low C yep. five, yep. Just five, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, truck. Five T, it's still five T, right? Yeah. And, and they just they're just sitting here. And it's just like I have no interest in running them. Because I know it's gonna cost me three hundred dollars every time to run them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sure. Three hundred dollars to run them. And tires and <clears throat> those everything's they, expensive. Yeah. yeah, but how often are you going to run them, though? That's the thing. You're not going to run them all the time. I mean, it's like if I really – like my crawlers, I run all the time. I mean, it's because I mm. – like I enjoy it. If, if it's what I'm going to enjoy, I'm going to run them all the time. Like, you know, we've got the area and the train for that stuff. So it's, mm. it's – if I find something I like, I'm probably going to do it. Yeah. So what is the Axio Fest one that you're talking about up in the mountains there? Yeah, the the whole event or yeah, twenty um, fifth, twenty four, something June, around there. June twenty or July twenty fourth to the twenty seventh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Tony's yeah. catching a plane. <laughs> Tony's gonna get on a plane now. Nah, I'm, I'm gonna be on one leaving Hawaii for work. But, yeah. uh, oh, it's gonna be yeah. fun, Tony. It's work. It might be Hawaii, but it's still work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's where you need to take a drone with you, Tony. But it's filmmaking, good old, so... Good old, good old <laughs> it's not yeah, that yeah. much work. <laughs> it's fun still. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. I've got BSRC showing his UDO as well. That's uh, John and BSRC. Thanks very much for that, guys. Yeah. Thank so, you very much. Josh, we were at the G6. I'll just show you something real quick. And uh, <laughs> I brought my Winnebago camper. I built a Winnebago camper uh-huh. out of the with the GCM racing uh, chassis, and we actually raced it on the beach with uh, <laughs> against some other crawlers. And this time, I I actually put a 3S in here. So on 3S, my camper was just booting. It was just crazy. You put well, a three S in it. Really you put three S in it. Yeah, I put a three S in it. I ran it all weekend with. Uh, look at it go now. It's gonna jump. <laughs> it's doing wheelies. <laughs> oh yeah. It's all over the shop though because of the weight. Oh, oh. it's so much fun. One of the guys on uh, Scale Builders Guild, he's got one of those uh, Winnebagos, and he, you know how I've seen a couple. Scott Lampert, I Lampert. I don't know. I, I'm saying the name wrong. I'm sure, um, but he's been doing that crazy cool scratch build, like Winnebago car hauler. Okay. Yes. Yes. I saw that. And it's it's amazing. But somebody else on SBG took one of those Winnebagos, the metal ones, Tonka, and is converting it the same. Uh, and it's I saw it pop up on the Facebook Scale Builders Guild group, and I was just like, oh, that looks so cool. I've I've also done the interior. I've done uh, I got curtains inside. I got my table. I put some fake wood paneling inside. Uh, it's all glued paper, but it looks like wood the interior is all done. Uh, it's got dishes on the table. I painted <laughs> the sink. I got dishes on the sink. Uh, I got the forks, the spoon. Uh, there, there's a little guy playing with a one one hundredth Jeep on the table, as if it's a fake RC. But how you did you Walter it? White in there? Is what you needed. <laughs> Walter White, sorry. Right. <laughs> 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 you know that's those things. I've I've never fully got it in, got into the whole uh, detailing like that. It just I don't I never. 
fully fully did that. It's uh, it was just never the side of the things that I enjoyed as much as you know, like the the crawler performance. Um, you know, and it's just crazy. Like, I think I had actually mentioned it in my one of my last videos. Just a lot of it is so much different, just depending on like the people's area and what kind of terrain they have. Yeah. You know, it's like you don't have the terrain. It's like, well, if you're into scale stuff, what else are you going to do? Make it look more scale. But it's. I, I always like the scale side of like the tube chassis builds and metal panels and metal axles that are, you know, realistic looking and that whole side. Yeah, you built some pretty nice tube chassis, and uh, on your website, you actually have links uh, to the templates if somebody actually wants to build one, which was very nice, and right. that's actually yeah. pretty free. Yeah, yeah, they're just, you know, I drew a template for a truck that I was going to build, and I mean, I was done with it. It's that or sit on the PDF myself, so, <laughs> you know, a lot of that's people are things. Hmm. I was looking at those because, well, one, it made me go buy a welder, seeing all those bills. And then I found the Howler RC Customs panels that you had for the battery trays that you yep. were selling. And I uh, got one of those. Yeah, that uh, yeah, that was my buddy Howard, dude, who made those. And I just, like, hosted the webpage for him so that he could, you know, because he, he handled all that. I just, like, hosted the webpage. But he was just, he was a good buddy of mine back in Kansas City. Um, and yeah, it's you know I, I redid my website the last I don't know, few weeks ago, something like that. It's actually been been nice to get it redone and make it usable again. It was WordPress based before, which just sucked. Uh, Tony, I think that battery tray. I'm the one that pointed to you to that battery tray many years ago. Man, man, I remember I looked at a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah, um, and maybe that's where it all started. And then I started watching all the videos even. So yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to do a little bit better about keeping the website stuff current. And, but you know, that's how it always goes. I'm trying to make a workflow though of like, if I actually make a video, I you know upload and schedule the video and make make the post on the website, schedule it at the same time, so that it's just a workflow I work through and actually keep a a habit. If I do it that way, I'll I'll do it. <laughs> it's when I get lazy and. And don't do one workflow all the time that I just that stuff falls off. I, mean, I have a hard time scheduling a video. If I do two, three videos at the same time and, and I schedule them, I have a hard time waiting for them to actually be broadcast. I just okay. like, okay, I'll put one one after the other. I, 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 I'm too anxious for people to see it. I, I, I know what you mean. I, I used to be the same way. I just, I, uh, it, I've got to the point where. I'm better about it now, and I like scheduling it, and it, it schedules to go live at like 5 a.m. my time, um, so I can, you know, I wake up, and like most people probably, I roll over and grab my phone, <laughs> you know, check that it's, you know, that what emails I have, or, you know. Because you know, we're, I'm three hours behind the East Coast on this side, so yeah. you know, have people you, have, already, you, have you used a Premiere on YouTube yet? I have, and it's been okay. But it's like, you know, if it was a five-minute video or a six-minute video, it's like the Premiere is only live for like ten minutes, and then it's done. And I don't want to wake up at five a.m. to do that again. So True. it's a. Uh, I use five a.m. just because I think it's it's one of the the best times to to launch a video um, and I can usually gauge you know if I wake up and you know if I wake up at 630 and it's got a thousand views or something like that then I'm like pretty happy it's like okay start it off you know like it's uh, you know it's usually around where I'd, I'd like it to be um, you know like the, the scale news it's like it's scheduled it's on people know what time and what day and they can plan on watching it if that's something that they enjoy doing. And I think the scheduling is important for that reason. I used to just upload them as soon as they were done. You know, it'd be 10 o'clock at night the night before and they'd go live. Uh, but I'm also trying to do the, you know, the 
follow the YouTube algorithm stuff and make it so that subscribers know when things are going to go up and they watch for it and they make it a routine. Then yeah. it pops up and they're suggested videos more. All that fun, happy horse shit. But it's, you know, it's it's a weird job, you know? Like, and, and you know, it's not like YouTube doesn't pay enough for the effort that it actually takes. You know, I probably put another 30 hours a weekend just on YouTube videos, you know? Oh, yeah, full-time job for sure. It's, you know, and I, I work at least my <laughs> regular hours here. And some of that's crossover, which is nice. But it, you know, it, you know, for, for six or 700 bucks a month, it doesn't really, I spend a lot more than that to make that, you know? Yeah. So, no, but everybody thinks you're you're rolling in it from YouTube, right? Yeah, like my you know, my analytics right now show me at five like five hundred and seventy four dollars, like for the amount of money in the last month I've had to spend to make five hundred and seventy four dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Yeah. So you're not going to be buying a Ferrari or Lamborghini anytime soon. Yeah. The only way I make money is well, the the Kyoto one, right? If I take, you know, if I take has home. his book out, or you I can make a lot of money on eBay. I know. It's... <laughs> yeah. it's crazy. Okay, guys, uh, we're gonna end the live stream. We're gonna stay in the chat here and chit chat with uh, each other. So thank you for showing, and we'll go around table to uh, say goodbye. And uh, then we'll go off here. So uh, let's start off with 11 Charlie. Later, guys. Uh, hopefully, see you next week. Be safe. Yes, RC. Everybody have a good night. Thank you. Green Frog RC. Everyone later have a terrific night. And John. Right on, guys. Good night. Thanks for watching. And we'll go with Jack. Hello, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. And I'm no punk, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Godzilla. You're in trouble, brother. It's Godzilla. <laughs> Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Oh, boy. Tony. <laughs> Here we go. All right, guys. Have a, have a great weekend. Get those RCs charged up. Yeah, it's gonna be a good one. Well, you better hope he's not watching, mate. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Josh, uh, thank you very much, Josh, for coming in. I really appreciate you uh, spending some time with us tonight. It was awesome. Yeah, you know, I was saying, Josh, thanks for yeah. coming in. Uh, yeah, thanks, guys. Hope, uh, it was awesome. Yeah, good talking to everybody. Yeah. is always fun to talk about. Go have fun with whatever you're driving. Make a video. <laughs> I'm just trying to work out about that $9,900 chassis you mentioned yeah. earlier on. Yeah. Uh, make a lot of video and like that you can make a million dollars and buy yourself yeah. a Lamborghini on YouTube. Right. YouTube and live a lavish lifestyle. Do they have to buy your <laughs> Yeah. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on RC Talk and uh, maybe we'll see you tomorrow night on um, um, that's, the <laughs> that's if That's if Steve has got a spot for you. Steve OD on Steve OD's channel. Tomorrow night at 9.30. Talk to you guys later.